Hello, and welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast, or Wrestling YouTube Show. Let me get back, it's on the center. Um, my name is Hobo Tom, and my girlfriend, well, you might hear from later on, probably on Friday, i make some predictions. Um, very quick programming note while I organize myself. Unfortunately, I guess I set the volume too loud. When I did the mixed match challenge. So unfortunately, I'm back on my three month suspension from live streaming. So unfortunately, or fortunately, I won't be doing any more live shows until the new year. So we might have a hobo celebration on New Year's Eve because that's when I'm allowed to live stream again. I guess that's okay. Um,. I know WWE, this is the second time they've caught me. First time I, I know I, I, I did wrong, and I felt shame. Because I just tried, tried to directly put it on YouTube. Not a good thing. I guess the second time, I don't know, I guess the volume. Was I know I've heard things where if you, have, you play the volume too loud and they can hear too much of it, that they will get you copyright. And I don't think I... I know I showed a video clip when I was kind of bouncing around, but I didn't think it was that long. Maybe that little mirror down there, or actually, yeah, it was over here. I have, to figure, I have to remember, this is a mirror image. But somewhere down there, I think every so often I, I try to show like little clips of it, especially during the dance-off. Maybe it's because I it actually had to work this time. So... It is what it is. No more live streaming for three months. I'm on copyright probation. So I just have to be kind of a little careful about what I do. Although for some reason, Lucha Underground doesn't care. Which is great. So I'll still be doing my Lucha Underground with some video clips. Um, I guess the good news for me, I don't have to wake up at four in the morning this Saturday. I'll catch it later. I will have a review of it, though. Kind of go through the way I've done other videos. I'll still show you live, or at least somewhat live, NXT shows I do go to. And I'll be going to one in November. So I think the pay-per-views I'm going to miss are October. Do they just have the Super Showdown? I forget. I want to say I, I would miss. I know they've changed their own schedule. I would miss the Super Showdown Evolution. I guess Survivor Series. That's a staple in November. And I think Tables, Ladders, and Chairs in December. Whatever the December pay per view is. I won't be able to live. So I'll try to make it up to you folks. I'll try to catch the New Japan King of Pro Wrestling, I think it is. Whatever their big show is, January, I don't know. But that, 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 that first Sunday or Saturday in January, I'll try and provide some comment and feedback for you. The fans. Oh, and also, I always give a shout out to people that actually leave comments. Royale Kier 345. Thank you very much for your comments. On my last, on my previous live stream, I do appreciate the comments. I like the fact that someone's actually watching. This, ooh, yeah, moment goes out to you. And that reminds us that everyone should be more like the Macho Man every day. 
the Royale Killer, three, four, five. You were like the Macho Man. You shouted out the Hobo Tom. Yeah. Hobo Tom will give a shout out to you. Yeah. I'm out of here now. Again, Macho Man, he's always been my favorite wrestler. My best impersonation of him. Sometimes you get a free haircut out of it, too. Remember that, folks. So, but let's not talk about the madness anymore. Let's talk about some SmackDown. Um, SmackDown was a really fun show. There didn't seem to be a lot of wrestling in it. Or, or the wrestling matches were very long. And a lot of promos, again, a lot of build-up to the Super Showdown. It's okay. Again, it's... Hey... WWE is making money hand over foot. They're getting millions upon millions of dollars to go to Australia. Good for them. Bad for people on the East Coast who would actually have to wake up at like 4 or 5 a.m. to actually watch it. Only reason I'm waking up at 4 a.m. or earlier is to go fishing. So I went fishing on Tuesday. I had fun. It was nice and relaxing under the bridge. In the shade. I think it was like only 70. It was, it was comfy. Comfy fishing. Best fishing. And this is that time of year for fishing here in Florida. I mean, right after September. Because in August, it's way too hot. But that's enough of that. I'll give my fishing forecast later. Or fishing reports later. Well, let's talk about SmackDown. SmackDown starts off with Paige detailing all the things that happened. The previous week at the Styles House. <laughs> I love the cheap props that WWE uses. Again, it showed Samoa Joe. It says Samoa Joe should be fired. And AJ seemed genuinely disturbed and really pissed off. And it could have been that Brian Pillman esque moment. Yes, you old sparks. You know the one I'm talking about? When Stone Cold Steve Austin came to the Pillman household and Pillman made him with a, met him with a gun and then went black. As far as we know, they probably had a beer together and had like ribs, macaroni and cheese, and a beer. They had a cookout with a gun. But that's enough of that. So again, the first match was R Truth and Carmelo versus Zelina Vega and Andrade Cien Almas. La Sombra. And this was a really fun match to watch. I'm surprised they didn't show this on the Mixed Match Challenge. Because this sets up perfectly for it. I don't think Vega and Almas are on the Mixed Match Challenge. I don't know if they came together too late. To go through all the booking and creative and all the other stuff that WWE does. Heaven knows they hire enough technical people to catch people like Hobo Tom by playing music, by playing their commentary too loud. Probably. I think, I, I, I want to say that's what really got me. Because I think there was one, one clip I saw of some guy showing the whole mix and match live championship on his cell phone on a camera. Things people will do. But, hey, what can you do about it? That's why they get paid the money, and I don't. I collect my cans of aluminum. But, but this was a really fun match. Lena Vega has some pretty good moves. Um, they did Tranquila at one moment. Um, uh, Selena Vega and Carmella were going at it. A really good back and forth. Then, of course, uh, let's say Vega tagged in, so R Truth had to come in. And our truth threw almost against the ropes, and and, the, and it was a double tranquilo, met however, by the double split. Whoa, he got showed up. That was pretty cool. I mean, almost I think he like flung himself out of the ring. Whoa, our truth threw threw him into the corner, and he just like flung himself out of the ring. That was pretty cool. I mean. Carmella's, she's getting so much better. I think it's just the reps. But the thing is, like, can Carmella really get the hot tag if it's a mixed match challenge? Because 
when she tags in our truth that just means Zelina Vega has to come back in. And in theory, she should be the fresher of the two wrestlers. So, is there such a thing in the Mixed Match Challenge? And again, why isn't this on the Mixed Match Challenge? Is that right on TV? I don't mind it. And then, of course, Almas pulls off Carmella, which I, because uh, Carmella went for the pin on Vega. I guess that's the only thing men are allowed to do. And, and catch kicks. It, it, I'm still waiting for that one guy. And you know it's going to happen eventually where just like an open hand slap to to the female competitor. It should be taste I mean as long as this, as long as this, as long as it's not a Minoru Suzuki moment for the most part I'm cool with it. But again they are wrestling. I mean they have so many intergender matches out there you can watch and a lot of times the women actually win too. So there are ways to do it. WWE has yet to figure it out. And I think they're still recovering a little bit from the, I guess, Attitude Era. I always forget the eras. I know I skipped out on like one or two of them. When all the women did were like bikini shows and evening gown dress matches. Or brawn panties match. Whatever it was. Something like that. So they're still kind of recovering from from, from their not so great image. But then the shock is that Selena Vega tapped out. Selena Vega lost. Andrade Almas lost. I don't know. They're pushing our truth though. And Carmel. They're fun. So the next so again, this was a fun match. I mean, this was a really good quality cheeseburger match. And that's kind of saying something, considering, considering what it's a mixed match challenge on, on like SmackDown. It was good. It was fun. Everyone kind of got their spots in. Hey, I enjoyed it. And if I enjoy it, it has to be at least a cheeseburger. Then we went on to Ty Dillinger in the back. Fox to Page, he wants Randy Orton. Well, I'll ask for that. Find out why later. And then there's the cooking with the New Day. Wait a second. I do a cooking show on my webcast. They're ripping me off. They should allow me to, to show as much in this match challenge they should. Or if not, they can send me a whole bag full of used Pepsi cans. Empty Pepsi cans. That's my aluminum collection. In royalty payments, we shall pay him in aluminum. Yes! But yeah, I, I, I did that. I'm trying to think if there was any other wrestler that had a cooking show on a wrestling show. I know JR used to promote his barbecue sauce. And I'll show my cooking clips. They're stealing ideas for me. I wish I could copyright and But I don't have any lawyers. I have a cat around here somewhere. I don't know where she went to. Right in the window. Looking outside all the other treasures of the night. But again, we had the Cooking with New Day segment. Again, there were a lot of short segments through this. And I guess I'll call the one a match. I'll get to that later. The bar, they're good. Well, well, well. And then in perfect unison. That was good. I mean, then they started to run down the cooking. How hard is it to make something that's terrible? Like pancakes. Mock the pancakes. You can have some good pancakes. <laughs> Corey Graves is like, just go to IHOP. <laughs> he ended it with a moron. I'm like, whoa. Um, eventually, the, again, the bar and New Day had their back and forth, and New Day got the early advantage, of course. But then Seamus found the dry mix, threw that in the eyes of the New Day, and just started to be on New Day. Poor Mr. Bootyworth got pancake mix poured all over him. So again, I'll go over my predictions probably on Friday with my girlfriend on the cell phone. I have to figure out what matches are playing. 
And then probably Saturday night or maybe Sunday, I'll put up a review. So it won't be, won't have great detail in it, but it'll, it should be okay. Oh, I can't live stream it. I'll figure out something, folks. Don't you worry about that. Then we had a Ty Dillinger versus Randy Orton match. Don't call it Randy Orton. Ty Dillinger comes out all fired up. Randy Orton, he's full heel. Black forearm tape, black trunks, black hoodie, black boots. Black means bad, folks. He is El Rudo Supremo, and he is the heel. And he does the heel so good, especially the Supremo. Vicious heel. Um, it started off really fast. Ty Dillinger went for the early advantage. Jump Randy Orton before he could get in the ring. Take Randy Orton in the ring. Where there's rules. You just go outside. Eh -eh. Um, eventually, Randy Orton did get the upper hand. Threw him over the barricade. Ty jumped it. Had to jump back out into the regular ring area, got caught draping DDT on the outside. And Randy Orton is now vicious. He took one of Ty's fingers, stuck it in between the turnbuckle. Not the fuzzy pillow padded part, but the part you use to, to tighten the ropes with. The metal part. Metal doesn't give. Pillow puffy stuff, that gives. Metal does not give. And just started to wrench on his fingers. Oh! Again, it's not as visceral as the screwdriver into the ear gouge and twisting. That made me cringe. But just knowing that your finger... Metal doesn't give. I mean, he's gonna... I don't even know if... He might have even tried to tighten it some more. Like a vice on his... Ooh! Vicious Randy Orton is... Good Randy Orton. I would have given this a rating, but I don't even think the bell rang. I'll tell you what, though. I'm going to say just for the heck of it, because it was so good, even though the bell didn't ring, I'll still give it a cheeseburger ra ranking. Only because it was really good and really shows the viciousness of Randy Orton. Then you have um, the Miz and Shelton Benjamin backstage. Miz is just trying to goad him into a fight so he can soften up Daniel Bryan. Then you have the Aiden English, the one night in Milwaukee. Wait a second. Wasn't there one night in China once? Or one. Was it one sunny day? I don't know. You know what I'm getting at, you pervy people out there. But again, mean Rusev's good Rusev. Aiden English says, I want to provide some context. And Lana, that's that Tennessee accent. She hasn't figured out if she's Russian or from Tennessee. And it, I guess it, it's and they're in the hotel room. It just gets annoying after a while. It's like, really? At least pick one. Don't be Rusev. <laughs> Don't be, I'm going to drink my apple pie moonshine. Rusev. No. And that's what I, or I'm going to have a slice of pecan pie. Would you like a slice too? Rusev. Let's pick one and stay with it. Going back and forth kind of gets annoying. Although, I think the only reason I notice is because like, she tries to start off in Russian, goes back to Tennessee. Big difference between Tennessee and Russia. Um, again, Rusev just gets mad. <laughs> mad Rusev is a good Rusev. Chases in English, leaves Lana in the ring by herself. And really all it is is, is your typical hotel scenario where Lana comes to Aiden English's room. Aiden English is like there by himself singing shirtless his pants. Lana comes in. Whatever. Then the next match. Oh, wow. There's only one more match after this. If Daniel Bryan versus Shelton Benjamin, 
Uh, the Miz is on commentary. Um, Daniel Bryan's in the Seahawks color scheme. Again, he is from this greater Seattle area. Oh, wow. The leather, Lizard Death Match going on that window up there. Nature! The Discovery Channel at home. But again, this is a really good match. I mean, Shelton Benjamin, there were some weird botchy spots. Like Shelton Benjamin didn't roll fully out of the way of the flying headbutt. And they really did look to knock heads. I don't know if it was going to be a splash or the flying headbutt. But he rolled and didn't roll quick enough. And they literally went like head to head. Not good for Daniel O'Brien. I'm not going to pass that impact test. Whatever that impact test is. Back in the day, I don't think I, don't think I had an impact test. Okay, so here's some smelling salt. Or, or by the way, it's 1994. So, so what? So, so what year is it? Well, you just said 1994, coach. Oh, you're good to go. No, again, he he botched that flying head headbutt. Had a really bad bridge on a bridging on a back bridging suplex. It's like ugh, and the old German suplex with a bridge, and like he he was. I thought he was being counted, honestly. Um, actually, Shelton Benjamin went over. I forget what his finisher was. It was quick, kind of sudden, really fast movement, like a, like a kind of like jawbreaker type thing. And then, of course, Miz just beats on Daniel Bryant because he's the Miz. He's like, I'm going to win any way I can. If that means beating you up and softening you up, I'll do that. I don't mind doing that. Again, traditional heel stuff. Good stuff. And then he came out, yeah, your fuzzy warm breast cancer promo. Although probably after this week, it's going to get old, I guess. Or will get old. By like the 20 seconds. Like, again. It's for a good cause. Right now, it's okay. We'll see what happens later. You have Asuka versus Peyton Royce. Asuka's really looking weak. I mean, Peyton Royce really was dominating most of the match. Um, Asuka got in, I guess, like a knee bar and then transitioned that to an ankle lock. Of course, Peyton Royce reached over for Billy Kay. It, of course, you had to break the count. And it was a really fast transition into the Asuka lock. I'm not liking this, only because I'm used to seeing Asuka just dominate, or at least be the more dominant wrestler. And. Because of that, this is a ham sandwich. Okay. I mean, it's just the wrong way to present Oscar. I know they're trying to, I guess, rehab her, but not working. And then you had, in the main event, you had Becky Lynch. Again, the crowd still loves her. Evil Becky's hot. Evil Becky rules. And is this kind of highlights of, of a Becky putting the whooping on Charlotte Flair. And then eventually Charlotte Flair comes out. She stands tall. She gives Becky the loader suplex through her, through her new poster, which was just it was a super showdown. And just so Becky holding the title and her one foot on Charlotte Flair. And that's it. That was, a, I guess, the go-home show for the Super Showdown. It was good. Nothing spectacular happened. I would like to thank everyone for watching. Again, Royale Killer 345 thank you very much for your comments. Again, anytime you can, you can, you can always feel free to leave a comment. Again, I will be on my on suspension, my 90-day suspension. I'll be back December 31st live streaming. You can always catch my videos here on YouTube at the hobo and his girlfriend.